and welcome to Old Ways Gardening and Prepping. My name is Teresa. I'd like to welcome you out to the shed of many names this evening, where, as you can tell by the title and what's right here beside me, I've got some beautiful sweet potatoes to take care of. Now, back before thanks, well, right before Thanksgiving, a uh, certain store that starts with the K do sweet potatoes on sale for 37 cents a pound. Now, where I usually buy my bulk from, way cheaper than what I could get a 40 pound box of sweet potatoes there for. So, me and my other half talked, and he looked at me, he said, you know what you need to do. So, to so there I went. They looked at me like I was crazy, but I got 40 pounds of sweet potatoes, give or take minus a few because we've ate a few, but not that many because I want to make some butter, sweet potato butter. Yes, it's amazing. I want to make up sweet potato pie filling and hopefully I'll have enough left over that I will make some sweet uh, candied sweet potatoes and jar them up as well. So, time to get busy. Now, this is the only time that you'll see me add a little bit of water to my sweet potatoes, but that'll be when I get ready to cook them because I won't be draining that off. What you'll do is you take your pretty sweet potato, take your peeler, And gently peel them and sometimes the peelings have a mind of their own and I'll take a pear knife for that one because I don't want to waste any of my sweet potato if I can help it And you're just going to keep peeling. And always make sure you have a really good peeler. They come in so handy. I have had this peeler for years. And it's already cut through pumpkins. It's cut through cushions and a whole bunch of other things and now it's doing sweet potatoes and it's still just as sharp just want to make sure your potatoes are getting clean and I've already washed these so for those who, you know, might say something, yes, the potatoes were washed. Find you a flat spot on the potato. Cut it. And I'm going to fill this roaster full. And I said don't waste no little pieces. Get it all in there. Now, please save your peelings. Put them in your compost pile. And now if you have uh, some hogs or goats, they will love a treat. But like I said, try to put them in your compost pile because we need to build and make as much compost as possible. Well, I have all these sweet potatoes and three more full bags to do. Once I get the roaster filled, I'll quit peeling and cutting up my sweet potatoes because that means the rest is going to go for candied sweet potatoes and that that'll be a third video I'm doing a sweet potato pie filling that'll be one video 
sweet potato butter, and then candied sweet potatoes if I have enough sweet potatoes left over. So I'm going to get busy, and I'll bring you back here in just a little bit. Okay, if you watched my previous video from yesterday, I finally was freed from the backyard. I was able to get a hold of, go inside and get water and get the sweet potatoes cooked. And if you notice, I'm now in a t-shirt because it's warm outside, so everyone be careful. Okay, the sweet potatoes are all cooked. Now, this roaster was mounded up. They have really cooked down. Now, I know some people are going to go, ooh, some of those look horrible. I will show you an example. Nothing wrong with these sweet potatoes. Now, I don't always peel down to the orange. You can see the ring on the outside of this slice. That's the kind of yellow protective skin under the orange, under the brown skin. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. And I use just as little bit of water as I could. And most of all this is natural sweet potato juice. Now, I have it cut off because this stuff is hot, and I do not want to get it slung on me. Now, what I'm going to do is use my immersion blender. And the gist of it is to go around and get all of it pureed up. I'm not going to make y'all sit there and go through this with me because it's going to get loud and probably a little bit messy. And I will bring you back as soon as I get these potatoes pureed. See you here in a little bit. Okay, I have it mostly pureed up. I'm not worried right at the moment about the chunks in here because that will get pureed more once I start making my other recipes now I've got I'm, I should have brought my other big bowl but I didn't hindsight I right, each batch now this is this roaster is not as full as I'd like it to be but some is better than none I'm gonna be splitting this roaster full of sweet potatoes up into two batches I'm going to be making one batch of sweet potato pie filling, one batch of sweet potato butter. So, now, yes, I know my measuring cup don't have the measurements on it anymore, but I know my measurements. That's four cups. And that's two cups. So a single batch is going to be six cups of puree. So. And believe me, be careful, this is hot. Uh oh, got it all over my coffee cup. Okay, that's another batch. This is the batch for the sweet potato pie filling, and this is going for the sweet potato butter. Try not to sling it everywhere, if possible. Okay. That's two batches of that. Looks like I'm going to find out what sweet potato flavored coffee tastes like. But that's okay. I'm up for a challenge.
now that the pressure canner is quiet and cooling down from the load of sweet potato pie filling we're going to start on our sweet potato butter now i have this already heated up i'm going to just have to watch out make sure i don't get any of the top part down in here now remember this is a triple batch so I'm going to need four and a half cups of light brown sugar. That's two cups. Let me tell you, I'm going to be calling this one close on several parts. Oh, I should have it. That makes four cups, and I'm going to, uh oh, I see I made a mess. Okay, that makes four and a half cups. Just barely made it by the skin of my teeth. Okay, and I'm going to need three cups of white sugar. And I use cane sugar. That's two cups. There's another cup. Now, a lot of people don't know that your butter recipes you can also use them as pie filling as well i'm going to have to let that get a little warmer which will be here in just a little bit well it's pretty warm it's starting them and just like the sweet potato pie filling i'm going to puree it some more and make sure that the uh, sweet potatoes are all smooth and everything's blended well. Now, let's do our spices. Now, my butters, I tend to like to be a little heavier on the spices. So, cinnamon, I'm going to do uh, yeah, six tablespoons. Two, three, come on now. cinnamon and six and I'm going to want three tablespoons of powdered ginger oh it's smelling so good two Now, this sweet potato butter, you can also substitute it for sweet potato pie filling. Add your eggs, your evaporated milk, and everything when you go to make your pies. And I want a little more kick of allspice in my butter on this one. So, a single batch has two teaspoons of allspice. This one, since it's a triple, I'm going to need six. 
one. three now you could you can add cloves if you want to four now this is Jamaican allspice it has more of a clove scent to it but it it has so many other flavors as well. And there's my six. I hear the wind's picking up good. I'm trying to get these two batches done before any storms hit. Now, in my original recipe, a single batch, I used a tablespoon of vanilla. So I would need three tablespoons. I doubt I'm going to have three tablespoons, but you know what? I'm going to roll with what I have. Yep, I have one. So, it's kind of better than none. I thought there was a little bit more, but she gave all she had. Poor little thing. tried. She really tried. Oh, this smells so good. And of course, when I puree it up, it's going to be completely thoroughly mixed together. I want to get the spices mixed in as much as I can. So when I go to puree it, they don't fly all over the place and escape. Okay, I got my sugar, my brown sugar, cinnamon, ginger, allspice, vanilla. And since I like it just a little bit, richer now i'm not going to measure it because a lot of times oh a lot of times i just add and i want just a little bit more darkness so i'm going to add just a little drizzle not too much and this is Grandma's unsulfured molasses. That's just going to give it a little bit more of a deeper, richer undertone. I'm going to end up having to make some gingerbread. I've been wanting some gingerbread for a while. So... And this also will help add into the, sorry, not trying to deafen y'all. This will also help boost up uh, the potassium amount that's already in the brown sugar. This will just add a little more potassium. And as always, don't worry, I will have the single batch recipe in the description box below and this recipe doubles triples quadruples it multiplies very well and, and you're just going to use your immersion blender to puree it up and make it all good and smooth and make sure that it's mixed together very well. And I'm not going to make y'all suffer through this loud noise and I'll bring you back as soon as I get it all mixed up. See you in a bit. See how beautiful and dark and rich and now always taste it to see 
if it's spiced the way you like it, if it's sweet enough for your taste. Because now is the time. Oh my gracious. A bow weevil. It's the south. Weird stuff. Oh my gracious, that's good. You can still taste the sweet potato. You still taste the sweet potato. The spices are in, not way in the back, but you can taste the spices. Just sweet enough, not over sweet. Oh my gracious, this is a good batch. Okay. Now I'm going to heat it up a little bit because I'm going to have to watch the sides because I tried to improvise and I should have just washed the roaster out, but I didn't. Lesson learned. But I'm going to heat it up a little bit. I'm going to get it jarred up. Well, I'm going to heat it up because here soon I'm going to be pulling this last, this batch of sweet potato pie filling out and then I can roll with this batch of um, sweet potato butter. Absolutely amazing. I'm extremely proud of myself. This is a very good batch. And like I said, this can be used so many different ways. I'll go into more detail towards the end of the video. I'll see you here in a bit. Once I get my mess cleaned up, Get these jars out of the canner so I can get the canner ready for these. Get this heated up and pray that I'm not blown away from the winds outside. See you here in a little bit. Okay, I am short on space, but I'm still going to get it done. It is time to can up the sweet potato butter. I'm trying to get all this done before these storms get closer. Because that wind outside is something else. Now, you're going to need a funnel, a debubbler, a small little container of vinegar, and a rag to wipe your jar rims, your lids, your bands, and your warm jars. And you're going to want to make sure that you definitely debubble. And try not to burn yourself while holding the jar. You're going to want a one inch headspace. My canner is already warmed up and ready to go. Lid and oops, a lid and a band. Just finger tight into the canner it goes. I don't think I'm gonna get as much of the pumpkin butter. As I did the pumpkin pie filling, but we're going to find out. And I can't tell you how wonderful it smells in here. Between all the spices, the smell of the sweet potato, it's just absolutely amazing you want to make sure you get all those bubbles that you can get out of course there's always going to be bubbles you can't see but you try your best to win the battle and get every one of them I said one inch headspace. Wipe your rim real good. 
Man, that wind is picking up out there. Once I get these canned and out of the canner, I'm going home. Put your lid and band on just finger tight into the canner. Alright, I'm going to hurry up and get these done. And I will bring you back as soon as I've got them all filled up. Okay, I ended up with 15 beautiful pint jars to be exact. Very little left over. I have my flame on. It's been on since I started um, adding them to the canner, so it's good and warm. Well, it's hot. It's not warm. I've already oiled my rim. I've checked my vent pipe, make sure it wasn't clogged. I'm going to put my lid on. And watch out because your pan, your bottom part of your pressure counter will be hot. You want to line up your arrow with your notch if you have an All-American. Just want to tighten them down till snug. Watch out, they will be warm because the canner has been on. And you go back, tighten them down, and I will bring you back once it comes up to steam. See you here in a little while. Okay, I have a steady stream of steam. She has come up to temp and going to let her vent for 10 minutes. And I will bring you back as soon as the 10 minutes is over. She has been venting for 10 minutes. Now I will be putting on my 10 pound, 10 pound of pressure weight. Now of course you need to know the pressure weight for your area. You'll either use a 5, 10, or 15 pound pressure of your weight. You can call your local agricultural extension agency. Find out what weight is appropriate for your area. You can also call them and see if they are open for people to come in because of all this craziness. They have many brochures that you can learn gardening, cooking, canning, um, animal husbandry, um, which means raising animals. It's an old, old term. And so much more. They have many pamphlets and brochures. It's always worth going by. And you can also find out about uh, their free tree program as well. They give out free trees usually in the springtime. But now to quit talking, um, I put my 10 pound weight on. I'm going to wait till she comes up to a steady 11 pounds of pressure. And I will bring you back here in just a little bit. See you soon. While well, she's at a steady 11 pounds of pressure. And it's time to start timing the canning process. I will be canning them for 30 minutes. And I'll bring you back as soon as it's done. See you after a while. She has canned for 30 minutes. All I'm going to do now is cut flame off. I'm going to let her, I'm not going to touch anything. I'm going to let her naturally decompress down to zero or depressurize either way. And I will bring you back when it's time to open her up. Looking forward to it. See you at the wall. She is done. She's completely depressurize to zero. Always use a pot holder. We're going to remove the weight. I'm 
And be careful, they are hot. Wait a minute, what on earth was that? Hold on. Apparently a limb fell down and hit one of the chairs out there. Thankfully not a big one. Always remove the lid away from your face so you do not get steam burned. One beautiful pint jar. Uh, Sweet potato butter. Sorry about that. All right, I'm going to unload this canner and I'll bring you back here in just a little bit. Okay, 15 beautiful jars of sweet potato butter out of the canner. Only one decided to act up. It siphoned and siphoned on everybody. And they're going to have to have a nice warm bubble bath, but they're just going to get one anyway. I'm going to cut this video a little short because we have, it, the winds are just steadily picking up worse and worse. Uh, storms aren't quite here, but they're getting a little close for comfort. Now this video will post on Saturday, so everyone, next few days, please stay safe and sound keep everybody in your prayers because but these storms have wreaked havoc up north everyone if you have any questions please feel free to ask them just please don't delete them before i get to see them i'm more than happy to answer and help i hope this video encourages you to also make your own homemade sweet potato butter now the rest of the single batch recipe will be in the video below uh i look forward to seeing you in my next video everyone stay safe and sound stay positive i look forward to seeing you again here soon and may you each be blessed take care